For this lesson, we are going to be looking at the surface area of triangular prisms using their nets. So first off, we want to look at the characteristics of a triangular prism. So it's a prism when it has two parallel and congruent bases. If the base is a triangle, it is a triangular prism. The sides of a triangular prism are rectangles. So when I lay it out as a net, we have our two triangle bases. We have three lateral rectangular sides because those three sides connect to the three sides of the triangle. So two triangle bases because all prisms have two bases, three lateral rectangular sides because a triangle has three sides. Specifically, um, when we are finding the surface area of a triangular prism, we are going to find the base length of the three rectangular lateral faces and they are the same as the lengths of the three sides. So this one's a little bit easier to see because it has three different sides. We've got kind of a small, a medium, a large. They, these sides, this side clearly connects with that triangle. This side on the left connects with this triangle side and this side on the right connects with this triangle side. So these three lengths of the rectangular um, sides, the lateral sides, are the three side lengths of the triangle. And then the other portion is going to be the height of those rectangles, the length that connects one triangle to the next. So let's look at this first example. What I am going to do for this is I'm first going to just kind of shade in lightly with my pencil this triangle. And if it helps you to visualize a little bit too by shading in the triangle in the back, you can certainly do that. And then on my shape, on my net, we have three different um, rectangles, okay? So I have this first rectangle, which is my smallest side, okay? I have this second rectangle, which is this medium side. And this last rectangle, which is the long side. So we have these three, one, two, three, and we have three sides of our triangle. So for those three sides of the triangle, I'm going to look first for the small. We have three, four, five. So this small side right here, three, is going to match up with the small rectangle here. So this is going to have the base length of three. Then we are looking at our medium side. So three is the smallest and then between four and five, four is the middle side. So that is going to match up with the base of this middle side. And then our last side, our longest side, five, matches up with the biggest rectangle. So three, four, five, three, four, five. This other length here that connects the triangle from the front to the back, right here, is going to be the height of these rectangles. So height of 11, height of 11, height of 11, height of 11. And then the last part that we need to look at is if we think about this net right here, this length right here is one of the sides of the triangle. This length right here connects to those two together and they are the same length. So these two connect to each other. So this has a height of three. Same thing on the top because those two connect to each other. Those two connect to each other. And now we have everything that we need for our area. So when I'm looking at this, We've got this rectangle, base of three, height of 11, three times 11 is 33. This rectangle, base of four, height of 11, four times 11 is 44. This rectangle, base of five, height of 11, five times 11 is 55. Now I'm gonna add, or sorry, I'm gonna actually do my bases. So for my triangle base, we're doing our base times the height divided by two. So I'm doing four times three is 12, 
12 divided by 2 is 6. Up here, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. These two bases should be congruent to each other. So we have three different rectangles plus the two bases that I'm going to add together. So 33 plus 44 plus 55 plus 6 plus 6 to get that our total surface area is 144. So 144 centimeters squared. Let's try another one. This time the orientation is a little bit different, but still the same idea. We have our two triangle bases. We have three rectangular sides, okay? So in this one, I actually see right here, this rectangle looks like my smallest one. So I'm gonna highlight that here. We have our small rectangle. I have my medium sized rectangle and my biggest rectangle. On my actual shape, I'm gonna kind of shade in this triangle here so I can visualize it better. Here's one triangle, here's my other triangle, and identifying those sides. So my smallest side I highlighted in pink. We have five, 12, 13. The smallest side there is five. So that's telling me that the length of this base right here is five. And if it's easy, easier for you to like turn it around so it looks like the same orientation as the other one, you certainly can. Then my medium size, which I highlighted in yellow, we have five is the smallest between 12 and 13. 12 is our medium side. So that tells me that this length of the rectangle is 12. And then the last one, our biggest side is 13. So that tells me that the base of this is 13. So we have 5, 12, and 13, 5, 12, and 13. Small, medium, large, small, medium, large. For the length going across here, Connecting the two triangles to each other is the length across of these rectangles. So 18, 18, 18, 18. And then last, we have our triangle base. So our right angle is right here. We already have this side length is five. This length is what would fold in and connect here. So that tells me that is 12. And you should notice it's always the small and medium size not the longest side. Now we can calculate these areas. So in this box right here, we're doing 18 times 13, which is 234. Right here, we're doing 18 times five, which is 90. And then here we're doing 18 times 12, which is 234. 116. For our triangle bases, we have a base of 12 times a height of 5. We're doing base times height divided by 2. So 12 times 5 is 60, divided by 2 is 30. So both of my bases are 30. And now I'm going to add them together. So 234 plus 90 plus 216. Those are my three rectangles. And then plus my two bases. So plus 30 plus 30. When I add those all together, I get a total of 600, and it would be centimeters squared. Okay, number three. The orientation's a little bit different again. So, we are going to highlight our small, medium, large. So I've got my small rectangle here. My medium rectangle. And my large rectangle. Okay. 
going to look at my triangle. So I see a triangle right here. I'm just going to shade it in to help me visualize it. And a triangle here on the bottom. I'm going to shade it in to help me visualize it. So connecting these, I've got six, eight, and 10. So my smallest side I highlighted in pink. So I'm gonna highlight the smallest side here, which is six. So that's telling me the base of these rectangles is six. My medium side rectangle I highlighted in yellow. So I'm gonna find the medium side of the triangle, six, eight, and 12. Eight is that medium side. That tells me that the base here is eight. And then the longest side, 10, is telling me my longest rectangle base is 10. Sorry. The side that connects those two. So the connecting the triangle that's on top to the triangle on the bottom is this height of 12, the only other measure that we haven't used. So that's telling me the height of each of these rectangles is 12. And then for our triangle base, they meet at the right angle here. We already have the length of eight. We need this side that connects here, which would be six. So the base, and, or the height of both of those bases is six. Now we can calculate those areas. So I'm gonna do six times eight, which is 48. 48 divided by two is 24. 6 times 8 is 48, divided by 2 is 24. Started with the bases this time. Now I'm going to look at my rectangles. 6 times 12 is 72. 8 times 12 is 96. 10 times 12 is 120. So we're going to add all of these. So 72 plus 96 plus 120. Those are our three rectangles, now plus our two bases, 24 and 24. Add those together, we get 336. So our area is 336 meters squared. I'm not gonna do the next problem. If you want to do the U-try, you can. Um, otherwise, you can move on to the practice.